using your iPad or iPhone's touch interface to work with GarageBand or any other iOS DAW feels great. Most of the time. On some iPad models and on iPhones in particular, using your fingers to do things like note editing or automation can be quite a struggle. Especially if, like me, you're cursed with a big old set of sausage fingers. In a move that delighted fat digited freaks like me, Apple introduced keyboard shortcuts to GarageBand for iOS in 2018 and mouse support with the release of iOS 13 a year later. If you want to give this input method a try but don't want to break the bank, I think I've found just the thing. This is the Zedo foldable keyboard. It connects to your iOS device via Bluetooth, has a trackpad, and is ridiculously portable. I grabbed this off of Amazon for just under £30. You'll get the same or similar on Yankee Doodle Amazon for around $35 before tax. And for that price, I'm seriously impressed. For the sake of comparison, if you have a 12.9 inch or 11 inch iPad Pro, you can grab Apple's official Magic Keyboard for an eye-watering £379 or £319 respectively. Don't get me wrong here, the Magic Keyboard is fantastic, but it is a little bit on the steep side, even for Apple iPad 10 owners can grab the Magic Keyboard Folio for £279 that also has a trackpad and function keys. The Magic Keyboard for the Pro models doesn't… for some reason. If you have an iPad 9th gen, there isn't an Apple-made keyboard that has a trackpad built in. You'll need to grab the Smart Keyboard Folio for £169 and then grab a mouse or trackpad separately. You can buy a Logitech keyboard case directly from Apple that includes a trackpad for this model for a ball hair under £140. If you have an iPad mini or an iPhone though, there isn't an official keyboard option available and you'll need to grab a third party model anyway. All of those options are great, but they are a significant investment. So how does this thing work then? Well, first off, open the keyboard up and turn it on. Then press and hold the Bluetooth button until the blue light above the trackpad flashes. Next, open the iPad or iPhone you want to pair it with Bluetooth settings and you'll see it appear in the list of devices as Bluetooth 5.1 keyboard. Tap to select it and a couple of seconds later it will connect. And that's it. Super duper simple. The trackpad, while small, is actually really responsive. It's not got any click to it, so you'll be tapping on it to select stuff. You can dive into your iOS device's settings to increase the tracking speed, as by default I did find it a little bit sluggish. The keys feel surprisingly good too. They're scissor switches, so they're quite pleasing to click clack away on, and they do have a good amount of travel to them without being squishy. Having said that, the T, F, D, V and spacebar keys have been resized to accommodate that fold, which can take a bit of getting used to. Touch typists beware. The three LED lights above the trackpad indicate when the battery level is low, Bluetooth connection status and whether you have caps lock active. Now yes, the body of the keyboard is plastic, it's £30 after all. But the hinges that connect the sections are metal and there are rubber connectors between those sections too. Because it's plastic, it's also really light. Couple that with how small this gets when folded up and you have what is probably the most portable Wii keyboard on the planet. In use, it just works. Using the trackpad for fiddly editing tasks like automation feels good and using even GarageBand's basic shortcuts on the keyboard is great. For example, I can use the spacebar to start and stop my project
I can use the S and M keys to solo and mute tracks. I can use the Command and C keys to copy regions and then use the Command and V key to paste them. I can use the O key to open the loop browser and there's loads more too. If you are interested in what keyboard shortcuts are available in GarageBand, I'll pop a link below the like button. It even works on iPhone, though you'll need to turn on trackpad support via the assistive touch feature in settings to use that trackpad. If you're curious about adding keyboard shortcuts and a trackpad to your iOS music making workflow, for £30 this thing is a no-brainer. It has surprisingly decent build quality, is really portable and is super easy to get set up and going with. I highly recommend checking it out. Let me know your thoughts on external keyboards and trackpads down in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please give that like button a good hard slap. I really appreciate it. And to check out even more lovely GarageBand gear, watch this next.